Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar. Today, we're going to talk about worksite placement uh, tool within the Customer Support Center. And just so everyone knows how to get to these tools, I want to go ahead and show you um, on Elnoy WorkNet. If you select partners, it flips you over to the partner side where you can go to the area we have, where we have the customer support center. And you can see um, a variety of online tools and articles and instructions and full list of resources. Um, you can also get to your customer support center um, page from this link uh, within this guide. Or you can just log into LNI WorkNet and you'll see under partner tools, you have the customer support center. So you can click on that link and it'll take you to your uh, list of groups. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over into our test site. Um, so whenever you would come to uh, your uh, customer support center, along the top, you're gonna see dashboards, groups, depending on um, uh, what role you have, you might see user management, some resources, and then um, this icon right here is worksite placement. So when you think about worksite placement, think of it as a place where you can kind of keep your collection or your, your, your listing of um, employers and their work sites, okay? Because you're gonna use this later on whenever you're um, putting together the career plans for your, for your customers. So when you come to uh, worksite placement, it is a tool that's used across multiple programs in the Illinois WorkNet. So if you have access to more than one program, when you clicked, when you select the project drop-down menu, you're going to see the list of programs that you have access to. So if you're in one of these special programs, you can select one of those special programs and add your work sites um, there. If you're using the personal group, you may only see the Illinois WorkNet option. So what you're gonna do, if it's not already selected, you're gonna select Illinois WorkNet. Let's let it populate uh, my area. Then you'll see that you'll have your personal group. So, and this will say, you know, personal group, in my case, it's say Natasha Tulker, um, but we are on test, so that's why it says what it says. And so um, you'll go ahead and it should already be pre-populated to your personal group, but if it's not, then just go ahead and do that. You can um, filter, you'll see your list of employers that you already have in there. Um, you can yeah. easily, let's go ahead, we got some background noise. Let's go ahead and uh, mute that. And uh, so anyway, you'll be able to see your list of employers that you already have added. It's really simple to add an employer, just click the button and you can add a new employer if it's not already listed and you just simply enter um, the following information. So we're gonna take, uh, so you don't have to sit there and watch me type. We're gonna go ahead and look at uh, the uh, employer that I already have added. So when you go through this process, first of all, you're gonna add the employer and you'll enter their name, description, website. You can search to look up the NAICS code, enter in the uh, phone number, address, uh, and you know, address information, and then it'll prompt you to enter some contact information. So you can add in the contact information. If you have multiple contacts, you just simply um, add to, you know, add multiple contacts. Oops, go back here. Once you have your employer in there, you can either say, yes, it's the same thing. Um, it, it, would, it would, in the previous view, it'd say, you know, is this the work site? And if it, and um, you can say, yes, it is. So you don't have to um, enter that information again. And then once you 
add in the work site, you're going to be led to enter the job placement information. And so it's going to prompt you to look up the SOC code. So you can uh, you know, enter in a few keywords. Let's see if I just did fast food, you know, you can, or food, you know, you can, you can click on um, any of these and then it'll bring up, um, you know, the different options you selected and it'll pre-populate the, and it'll populate these two fields for you. You can enter in a description. You can select whether it's work-based learning, job shadowing, work experience, internship, on-the-job training, permanent employment. And I believe we will be updating this information to include uh, such things as like apprenticeship, um, a pre-apprenticeship type uh, options as well. You can enter the hourly wage for the placement and how many openings that you have at this location and then the estimated time um, that the person would be part of this um, uh, placement. Okay, so once you have that um, in, your, in your system, you'll develop a list over time and you can easily search, so we're just gonna look for popcorn. So it's gonna look at my different employers here. And you'll can, you can see in, um, these are for individuals who might have access to multiple projects. You can see that this particular entry is related to LMA WorkNet, just like my personal group. Or if I'm in a special program, you can see I've entered this in for my special program. Now, it does look like you can add customers here, and you can but this is not where we recommend that you add customers because we'd like for you to use the customer's career plan um, because that way the customer has visibility of the, their placement. So um, if you wanted to do it this way, you could, but again, we highly recommend that you enter the placement or add the placement to their career plan. Again, you can see we have uh, the employer worksite job. You can see the total number of openings and how many of those openings have been already filled, either as a part-time or a full-time position. You click on these uh, numbers and then you would be able to see who has already been um, added as a full-time position with that particular work site. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, okay, I already have my groups or my uh, employers in there, I have my work site, so I have my group of work sites that I'm going to be working with. And now I'm gonna go um, take a look at the different, my, my group of customers. So you can see with this particular test account, they have access to a variety of pro uh, programs, but right now we're looking at the personal group. So you look, click on the link for the personal group and it will open up to the list of customers that are associated with this personal group. And so you can select a customer and it'll go ahead and populate the information. We're gonna to go uh, to their career plan. Let's give it a second while it loads. You can see this particular person has multiple uh, career plans that are available to them um, since um, if you, if you had access to these as a, as a partner, you could use those. But again, right now we're looking at the personal group. So your personal group. So if you, you wanna click, uh, click on the, the general um, career plan that's available to everybody. So we're gonna click the Elmay WorkNet career plan. And uh, you can go back and look at the other webinars if you're interested in uh, a detailed overview of the career plan because we go through the process of reviewing assessments, setting goals. Um, for this example, we're just gonna go uh, straight to add steps and services. So um, there's different types of services that are entered into a career plan and they have different templates. So if you had something like building a portfolio, um, you know, something like that, or going to training, then um, it's just gonna collect basic information about you know, um, when your start date is, end date is, due date, um, what's the status, and so forth. 
Now, whenever you're looking at something like um, a job placement, now we have to go through and we want to, um, you know, connect them to that employer. So we have to look at the uh, employers that we already have in our worksite placement uh, group. And so I'm just gonna say, well, let's see if we have any services for um, work experience. So I can just start typing in work and I can see there's a, there's a variety of options here, but I wanna look at complete paid work experience. So I can just add that to the plan. And you'll see it comes up here in this general area, complete paid work experience. So I'm gonna click on this little edit button. And what it's gonna do, I'm gonna say, okay, well, first of all, I need to uh, associate it with a goal, which is to get a job. And then, um, so what, what you would see here is if I had multiple employers and work sites listed in my list, you would see all those different types of um, employers right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click add because right now I only have one option. I'm going to click add and you can see it pre-populates the information that's in um, in these fields. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say the minimum wage for placement, let's just say is $11. Um, we don't have to put this as subsidized wages, but if it is, you can add that in there. <clears throat> Otherwise, it would be unsubsidized, so the employer is paying um, that information or that that wage. Uh, you can select whether it's full time or part time, and you can say if it's started, and then you would say, okay, it's starting on. Uh, let's see, what's today? The nineteenth, and we're gonna go through two thousand twenty. And let's just say it's gonna go through February 28th. And I'm gonna say for this part-time job, they're gonna work you know, 15 hours a week. I could put special instructions in here. Um, this is just gonna say, no, it's not, it's not WIOA funded. And you could put um, special instructions and you can say update the customer service. Oh. Well, this is in test, so, um, but it would update the information and then populate their career plan. So that way your customer would be able to see um, the information in their career plan. Now, another uh, thing that you can do with the um, worksite placement, so let me go back to worksite placement is if you are using this for something like subsidized wages, then, uh, and you want to um, put that information in the system, then you can add that into, um, we have an area called payroll upload, okay? Let me just go ahead and go to that. Oh, come on, there we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit. I can see my information is here. I'm gonna use um, a different example for right now because I am in tests and I got my error message. So let me just pick somebody else for the moment. And I wanna go to payroll upload. Oh, let me just go ahead and let me go ahead and use this example here. Again, this is all test information. So, um, but you would select, you know, Elmi WorkNet, and then your your uh, personal group, and then you could do add payroll, and it's going to add ask you for uh, different start times. So let's just say this is twelve one uh, four. 2019 through, you know, 12, 20, 2019. And then what it's gonna do is you can click download, download payroll template, and then it'll put it into an Excel file. And you can update the number of hours worked, 
um, if there's any subsidized wages or unsubsidized wages and their hourly wages. So as long as you just update their hours worked, then you would update that information, save it to your computer, and then upload the payroll template. And then if you had any other files that you wanted to upload to save with it, that you could submit, do that and then submit the information. Um, so if you wanted to use this, you know, just on your own for your, for your area, for your group, then it would come up and you would be able to see, you know, for your payroll history that you've uploaded, you can see the start date for that time period, end date, the number of customers, the total of wages, when it was created, when it was updated. And if you wanted to view that information, you can see the listing of the customers and what was updated you know, their hours, the rates, total wages. So you can see a summary on this page and then you can export this information as well. So that is a, a quick overview of the tools that are in Worksite Placement. Again, this tool is out there and available for you to use, not only with special projects, but also with your personal group. So um, with that, Thank you very much. Uh, again, if you have any questions, you can always go back to the Customer Support Center page. This webinar will be posted with the partner uh, training materials, um, but then we also have instructions and more information in the full list of resources. So thank you very much. Have a great day.